My 2016 Nissan Sentra was starting to make a little bit of brake noise finally after about 52,000 miles. So I thought I'd make a quick video show you how to change the rear pads. Um, just using a jack, jack stands and hand tools. So go ahead and jack up your uh, car and take the rear tire off. Um, if you don't know how to do that, check your owner's manual, chapter six, I think. But uh, once you have the tire off, the caliper is pretty simple. So, Right here is the bolt that the caliper slides on. This is a 14 millimeter. And to take the caliper off, you're gonna have to loosen the top one and the bottom bolt. Um, go ahead and take them out. Um, if you need to change your rotors as well, then the caliper mounting bracket will also have to come off with these bolts. There's one on top and one on bottom and there's 17 millimeters. When the caliper comes off, you don't wanna leave it just hang because it'll only be hanging by the rubber hose and that's too much stress on this rubber hose. So. Get yourself, if you don't have a, a fancy brake hanger, just get a piece of safety wire or two or three zip ties put together. You can you can uh, tie the, or just a piece of rope or string, tie the caliper somewhere solid like this, like this uh, mount right here or a muffler hanger, you know, somewhere solid so it doesn't put too much stress on the hose. Go ahead and get your 14 millimeter and loosen up the, the top and bottom bolts. The top bolt looks like you probably have to use a wrench on it because you can't quite get a socket on there because of the brake hose. And lefty loosey. That's it, that's loose. It shouldn't be super tight. All right. Mine are free. Now, to get the caliper off, you'll have to compress the piston just a little bit. So just pull on the pull on the caliper kind of towards you away from the vehicle, and that'll squeeze the piston and push it back inside of the caliper just a little bit. Enough to where you can, it'll be loose. Once your bolts are loose, they should come right off now. Actually, go ahead and take your bolts out. There you go. Like I said before, we're gonna hang this caliper, even though it's not very heavy, um, it's not very big. I'm gonna go ahead and hang it with the big zip tie here onto the muffler hanger. And if your zip tie is too small, you can put a couple together. There we go. That bolt can come out now if you want. Now, if you wanna get a look at the brake pads, take them off here. And you can see mine were pretty worn out. Uh, so this little tab on the bottom of the brake pad is actually, it's supposed to stick out a little bit past the back of the backing of the brake pad. When it starts to rub, when you start hearing squeaking, when you're braking, that's what you're hearing is this little wear indicator kind of rubbing on the rotor. Uh, just to warn you basically that your pad's almost gone. And that's what I was getting. And if you can catch it and change it before the actual pad is totally gone, you might be able to get away with not having to replace your rotors. If you wait until that's worn down and you're actually grinding, your brakes are grinding, then you're probably gonna need new rotors because it's probably gonna scratch them, just tear them up pretty bad. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and compress the piston all the way back down in here because when you get your new pads, they're gonna be a lot thicker and obviously you need to compress that piston to fit the caliper back on. Okay, so one way to compress the piston is to take your old brake pad. Uh, well, first of all, get yourself a C-clamp. I just have a smaller four-inch clamp here. You can use a bigger one if that's what you have around here. Or if, you, if you're lucky, you'll have a brake caliper tool that's made for this, but uh, I don't have that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my brake pad, my old brake pad, just kind of lay it in there. And then put your C-clamp around it. Um, put the other end of the C-clamp on the bolt head uh, where your hose goes in the back and then just tighten it up slowly and it will compress the piston quite easily 
Uh, you just compress it until it's all the way flush, all the way in, basically. That's it. I can't go anymore. So I'm totally compressed. And there you go. I'll give you a better view here. Looks like I have totally compressed that in. All right, I'm going to take a screwdriver and pop out my old hardware. This should pry right off there. There we go. Now I don't need to change my rotors, so I'm not gonna bother with taking this bracket off. But if I did, all I would have to do is take this 17 millimeter, these two bolts here, top and bottom, off. Um, put your new rotor on and put the bolts back in. On the installation, we'll start on the driver's side here. And first thing you wanna do is clean up the area where the mount hardware was. If it's rusty, get yourself a little wire brush or something. Clean it up a little bit if you need to. Um, my brake, new brake pads did come with two different styles of, of this hardware. Make sure you use the one that closely matches with your original hardware. For me, the difference was how wide this gap is. So just make sure you use the similar kind. And just reinstall this new hardware. Make sure you get it seated right because that's what your pad will slide on as it wears. Okay. Next we're going to get our new pads and set them into the, the uh, brake caliper mount here. Just to show you the difference, here's my new pad. There's the wear indicator. You see how thick the pad is. Here is my old one. You can see how thin the pad material, all I had left, I barely had anything left. It was worn out. So we'll go ahead and put that in. Make sure you put it the right way. Um, the pads are kind of rounded to, to match the, the, the shape of the rotor. And on the driver's side, the wear indicator does go kind of on the bottom there. So we'll go ahead and put those in. Okay, and the other one, put that in on here on the outside. Okay, pads are in. Here's, I, I bought some little packets of brake grease. You can get a larger uh, can of this. You might already have some around yet, but just putting a little grease. The more grease, the merrier. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit in the holes where the, the, the mount bolts, pins, go in. Then I'm going to put my rubber boot on. The kind of wider side of the rubber boot goes on first. Make sure that's seated on there. Okay. Okay. Now make sure your bolts are nice and clean. Mine nice and clean. I'm not sure what this rubber piece is on the end of one of the bolts, but it does go on the bottom. Um, so make sure you get those in the right order. Don't know exactly what it does, but don't really care. I'm just gonna put it back how I found it. Because it's a little tricky to fit this bolt in on the top with this brake hose being in the way, I'm gonna go ahead and insert this bolt through the caliper first. Um, I'm going to grease the bolt up first. Again, it's the bolt without the without the rubber rubber thing on the end here. So the more grease, the merrier is my kind of point of view there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stick that through there. Try to get it in there. You go past the hose. Um, if you need to reapply the grease or smooth it out some, go ahead. You could put that bolt through first and then do your grease. Um, if I had that to redo there, but 
it will work just fine. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to cut my zip tie that I've got my caliper hanging by. And it's ready to go on. Um, I've gone ahead and pushed this bolt through past my hose on purpose because it's hard to get it past there with the caliper mounted. So I'm just going to thread or fit my bolt through the top bolt where it goes there. Once it gets into place, your cal caliper will, will fit right into position there. Make sure your rubber boots are kind of lined up where they should go. Now you can do your bottom bolt. Again, bottom bolt has the rubber thing on the end. I'm gonna go ahead and grease it up. All right, let's put that in. Kind of where it goes. And then the, the bolt just has threads out here on the outside. It only threads into this part of the caliper. So don't get too confused there. Just tighten it up to where it starts to catch. There you go. And then the top one as well. Rubber boot is kind of where it goes, should go. I have to expect, push it in there. Get yourself a rag and clean the excess grease off. You don't want to make sure you don't get any grease on your rotor. If you do, clean it off with some brake cleaner. Make sure again it's the boot is covering it up. You want that boot to be seated right to prevent water and grime from getting inside and making contact with that pin. I think I'm good to go. I can now use a wrench or a socket or a ratchet wrench or whatever you have, 14 millimeter to tighten that up. Doesn't have to be that tight. I don't know the torque spec, but let's get it. Just use some common sense. If you don't like common sense, Google it. You can find the torque spec or someone will put it in the comments. All right, I think I'm good to go. Once you're satisfied with the cleanliness, make sure you have your wire or zip tie off that you use to hang it with. Put your, and, uh, put your wheel back on. Remember, before you go driving anywhere, to pump your brakes. Um, several times because this piston is still compressed and that piston will need to come out and make contact um, with the brake pad and squeeze it into position before you go anywhere otherwise you won't have any brake pedal all right that was about it go ahead and put your uh, wheels back on and and lower the car back down and if this video helped you guys out hit the like button and again, not, not that bad of a job, and don't be afraid to try it yourself. You can do it. You don't need any fancy tools. So save yourself some money and do it yourself. Thank you.